Today, I'm going to show you a recent project of mine, which is an eight foot garden bridge. I made this primarily for my riding mower so I could get from one side of my yard across the drainage ditch to the other side. Therefore, I made it five foot wide. This project was really made for homeowners, DIY people. If you're a professional, someone looking for aesthetics, this is not the right video. I didn't have handrails on it. As I mentioned, the riding mower, um, aside from that, I do plan to transport a lot of raw materials to and from. So for clearance, I just want the most clearance as possible. So no handrails. You can make a flat bridge. There's a lot of videos out there already. In some cases, it might work better for you. If you're talking about the riding mower deck clearance underneath, arch bridges, they may or may not clear. Mine barely clears. So that's something to keep in mind. For tools that you absolutely need, you need a way to cut the wood, which is some sort of saw. You can use a circular saw, a reciprocating or a sawzall, a jigsaw, which is good at curves. Or if you really wanted to, you could use a handsaw. Then you need a way to join the wood, which would be a screwdriver or an impact driver. A drill would also be nice. Moving on to the stringers or the joists, I'm going to refer to them as stringers. I'm using pressure treated ground contact wood. This is the stuff that lasts a lot longer when in contact with direct soil. It's usually wet, heavy. When you're in the store, you're going to find all sorts of warped pieces and uh, you're going to have to take it out one by one and just make sure that it's a good piece. Sometimes they're not the proper length and so forth, so take your time there. You're going to run across the word prime or premium and standard. The premium or prime lumber they usually look nicer, there's fewer knots, so forth. Whether the price difference uh, is worth it to you, you're going to have to figure that out. I can't answer that for you. In my case, I chose a 2 by 10 by 8 for the stringer. I chose 2 by 10 because that will make the nicest curve. If you use a 2 by 12 generally speaking, the curve is going to be a lot more pronounced and your riding mower might not clear it. Likewise, on the other hand, if you try using a 2x8 or a 2x6, by the time you finish tracing the curve out, cutting it, it might be a little bit too thin to support any kind of weight on there, so there is a trade-off. Moving on to tracing the curve, I simply use flex conduit and a screw to hold it in place. I have seen people use a string compass. Uh, you could even freehand it if you had a steady hand. <laughs> the more important thing is on the ends, I would leave some slack I don't know the proper word, so that when you're screwing the deck boards, the screw doesn't go all the way through <laughs> the stringer. I'm using two and a half inch screws, so just keep that in mind. I also opted to include a bottom curve on the stringer. This is optional. My curve begins around 18 inches away from the ends, and in the middle, it's maybe about an inch and a half from the bottom. These are just really rough dimensions. I don't have any um, exact blueprints, I'm just giving you guys some rough numbers so that you can make a bridge that'll fit your needs. You can make it wider, narrower, longer, shorter. But in terms of weight, uh, capacity, you're gonna have to do a lot more research on that. For the outer or top curve, the best idea is to really use a circular saw. That seems to be the easiest way to do it. If you do a bottom curve like I did, you're gonna have to use either a sawzall or a jigsaw. If you try to use a circular saw, it's just not gonna cut properly in that area. Regardless, you really want to take your time cutting these curves. It saves a lot of hassle later on. If you have even the slightest slip up, you're going to be doing a lot of cleanup, which I'm going to go over next. If you're using a jigsaw like I did, it tends to leave an uneven edge because as you cut, the blade bends. So if you line up all the stringers um, clamped together, you'll notice that it's not really flush with each other. I use something called a spoke shave to do the best I can to match the profile, but it's just not gonna be exact. However, I thought this to be a better option than sanding wet wood. I don't even know if that's possible. It is pressure treated, which you really don't want to be sanding because of all the chemicals. If you can, you could also use a planer of some sort. In the next section, I'm gonna talk about the decking. This is also pressure treated lumber. Again, you wanna check for all the pieces to make sure they're all the right length. There's no crowning, warping, bows, uh, splits. 
I'm using 5 fourth inch by 6 foot by 10 foot long boards. I chose 10 foot because I'm building a 5 foot wide bridge. So for me, it was cheaper to go this route and just cut it in half. As I mentioned, not all of them are exactly 10 foot. You might have some that are slightly longer and vice versa. What you can do if this really bugs you, in the case of mine, if the shortest board was 9 and 3 quarters, you can simply cut all the lumber to 9 and 3 quarters and then do the half cut after that. But do know that since it's wet wood, even if you do that, it might not dry consistently and you might still have varying widths after that. For an 8 foot bridge, you're going to need 17 boards or 9 pieces of 10 foot lumber. This will leave you one spare piece in case something goes wrong or whatnot. After you cut everything, I grouped all the pieces by average length. Again, I couldn't get everything exactly the right size due to the varying lengths, but I just grouped them all and scrapped the longest and shortest pieces so that when you lay them out on the stringers, you're not going to have a jagged bridge, for lack of a better word. I just marked each group by number, you know, group one, group two, so forth. And then while you're building out or screwing down the deck boards, you would just alternate, you know, one piece from group one, one piece from group two, and so forth. If you're really worried about the jaggedness of the sides, a lot of people do this when they build decks. You can just take the circular saw and just square everything up after it's done. Next up is to test fit. I like to lay all the boards starting from the center of the bridge out. In my picture, I showed that there's a gap, but I found out that since it's wet and pressure treated wood, you don't need to do this. You want to butt the boards firmly against each other. When they finally dry, they're going to shrink naturally. They will leave the proper 1 8 inch gap. By doing this test fit, you can find out if you need to make any additional cuts or you do your touch ups before you finally assemble everything. The deck boards, um, in my case, they overhang the sides by one inches, but I've seen some people do two inches. It's just your personal preference. In my opinion, the hardest part of this whole project was lining up the three stringers. I had a five foot bridge, so I needed three for center support. I waited a year due to the lumber shortage, so by the time I got to assembling this bridge, they all dried a little bit differently. The best thing you could do, in my opinion, is to measure a set distance on each of the stringers, like two feet, four feet, six feet, mark it, and then when you do your blocking, the two by four blocking, just line it up that way, and it won't be 100% exact, but it'll get kind of close. In this picture, you'll see that the blocking is flat, but the usual practice is to have it standing up. The reason why I have my flat is because, again, when I'm screwing the deck boards from above, I don't want the screws to get in the way uh, from the screws used in the blocking. Finally, before you assemble the bridge, it will be a good idea to know if you have help moving it. Uh, wet wood is quite heavy. Uh, I might be wrong on my calculations, but I think my bridge was going to be around 300 pounds, which I know for sure I'm not going to be able to move myself. If that's the case, I would take a hand cart or whatever and move the frame to the final assembly location because once it's completely built you might not have three or four friends help willing to help you move this around once outside i didn't show this in the video or pictures but you do have to make sure the ground is prepared whatever that may be you might have to level you might have to compact the soil to keep the bridge from moving especially if you're going to be driving heavy equipment over it. You don't want that bridge shifting and moving where you don't want it to. I started screwing the boards, the decking boards from the center, and I moved my way out toward the ends. The screws I used were number nine, 2.5 inch GRK screws. They are multi-purpose and rated for indoor, outdoor, including pressure treated. You don't want these rusting, so make sure you get the right type of screws. Going back on the wet wood, you might also need to countersink the screws a little bit more than usual. That's a 1 8 inch deep, so that once it dries, then again you don't have screws sticking up and popping your tires and tripping you and all that nasty stuff. For each decking board, you're going to have 6 screws. That's 2 on the left, 2 in the center, 2 on the right. Uh, total, I used about 126 screws for the whole project. It includes everything, the blocking, stringers, everything. Finally, I laid my bark side down so that when it dries, it'll crown, which I think will fit the arch of the bridge better than if it cupped. And that's just a really quick overview of what I did for the bridge. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't do a video 
uh, of the entire process because as I mentioned, I started this last year and there was a lumber shortage. So a lot of the video that I had taken of me actually building the bridge was lost. But I am here to answer any questions. I'm not an expert. This is just really to uh, help someone out who wants something simple and not too worried about all the exact nitty gritty details. But again, yeah, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, comments, let me know down below. If you found this video helpful in any way, please like and subscribe. It would help my channel a lot. Thank you and have a good day.